allow me to bring to your attention that Nakuru County has been the media for the last maybe three months now. After the hostel takeover of the Nakuru War Memorial Hospital, a private institution by the Nakuru County government. It all started in October last year when the Nakuru County government stormed the Nakuru War Memorial Hospital in a bid to forcefully take over on allegations that the hospital lease had expired. The county sent enforcement officers in the middle of the night where patients were chased and forcefully removed from dialysis machines and ICUs heading to loss of lives after disruption. The same thing happened again on 19th January. And the overall effects of the disruption have been several lives were lost during the uncoordinated transfer of patients and removal of dialysis machines while patients were on them. Many of the patients have had to travel hundreds of kilometers to access dialysis to towns like Eldoret and Nairobi, and in the end proving not sustainable to many of the patients. Families have been separated from their loved ones since they have to look for health care elsewhere, especially dialysis and other critical ailments. Currently, over 50 dialysis patients are stranded since their covers had Nakuru War Memorial as their treatment centers through various covers. Goons have taken over advantage of the situation and vandalized the hospital. But when the courts pronounced themselves on the matter and was, issue, uh, was to issue a warrant of arrest to the county commander, he obliged, but instead of providing security to the hospital management to continue with the services as ordered by the court, he handed the facility, he, he, he opened but left, and in one hour, less than one hour, uh, 200 goons took over the management of the hospital in full view of presence of the police. Goons chased away the hospital staffs who had resumed duty and locked the gates to the hospital, while police did nothing to provide security to the hospital staffs. The goons, with the assistance of the local member of uh, parliament, have seen locked the hospital and are routing the premises in full view of the police, and I strongly believe it is a wake-up call to ask senators that governors may use security operators to frustrate our oversight work. The case has presented the levels of governors we go in terms of abuse of office and disregard of the rule of law in a collaboration with the law police chiefs. It is a wake-up call for Senate to be fast-tracking matters presented to aid either through petitions or requests for statements. Many of the investors are moving out of Nakuru in fear of takeovers from sanctioned goons. We must note that if only 10 governors gang up and decide to disobey the court orders, the counties and country at large may descend to anarchy and the country may be ruined. I also take this opportunity to hail the courts for en enhancing our mandate as senators when it comes to the correction and management of review in our counties. This will go a long way in uncovering the mysterious management and imprudent use of collected revenue by governors. Case in example, in example is the nose driving of revenue collected in Akuru previously from 3.6 billion to 1.6 billion. We have also seen cases where members of the county assembly have gone to bed with the executive. This has affected the oversight roles at the county and Wanjiko is left on their own. Point in example is the Nakuru where health committee in the Nakuru County Assembly refused to act on a petition on War Memorial Hospital but instead went ahead to support the governor on the illegal takeover of the hospital. I think if we start disobeying court orders, 
I think we are doomed. This country is going to go to places like where Somalia is today. And the court orders must be respected. I'm going to take this matter very seriously. We are not going to sing uh, because somebody has said we don't obey court orders. And some senators and members uh, of the National Assembly are also singing the same song. You see, the revenue has gone down from 3.6 billion to 1.6 billion. Is it half year or full year? We don't know. But if it is full year, then it is very serious. And the primary oversight issue, like you said, is true. It is uh, MCS duty. But uh, it is not only in Naivasha. It's, I think, almost everywhere. Yes, and uh, the issue of uh, corruption. And people are saying corruption is in uh, the judiciary only. No, it is starts from the legislature. It goes, number one is, I think, executive, then legislature, and maybe also judiciary. Have a challenge as committees, as chairpersons of committees, because committees are a very critical uh, aspect of the business of the House. And the reason as to why we are here is, as we were told, by the remarks by the clerk that uh, this session has got objectives, which objectives will run into the programs that will be running in the house, it will run into feeding to the output that is expected of us as chairpersons, and um, the critical business of the house is done at the committee level, and this is where we are going to transact all or almost all the business of the house prior to taking them to the House plenary. So I believe that this is going to be an opportunity for us to ask ourselves so many questions as chairpersons of committees in terms of planning, in terms of programming, and in terms of giving ourselves personal objectives and personal targets as chairpersons so that the moment we begin running, we run with certain uh, uh, deliverables and uh, making sure that as committees we make sure the House is fully engaged with the appropriate businesses that it's supposed to. We will learn and unlearn the old tricks that we had so that we use and utilize that in this third session and of course to make sure that all our committees are effective and efficient in delivering their respective mandates. <laughs>